Welcome to Drawing from Nature. Today we're going to be drawing the red fox. We're also going to be learning about these amazing creatures, how they live and hunt. For example, do you know what a fox trot is and how the red fox uses it to hunt its prey? Do you know how far away a mouse can be where the fox can still hear it? Well, if you're interested in the answers to any of those questions, or if you'd like to draw along with me today, stick around while we draw from nature. Foxes are members of the dog family, known as canids. They have sharp snouts, bushy tails, and as dogs go, they tend to be pretty small, usually only around 10 pounds. There are many animals that are considered foxes, but there are only three that are considered to be true foxes, and that includes the arctic fox, the gray fox, and the red fox, and that's the fox that we're going to be drawing today. It's a handsome animal, and I think you're going to enjoy the picture that we create. But first, before we begin, I want to talk about the tools we're going to be using. We have a large sheet of paper here. If you're drawing along with me today, you don't have to have a gigantic sheet of paper like this. A small one's just fine, as long as we scale things up and down so that they fit on my page and on yours. And the drawing implements we're going to be using are crayons. I have a black crayon here in my hand, and in the tray here I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and also a brown crayon if that comes up. The first step to drawing our fox is to make sure, like I said, that it fits on our page. So whatever size piece of paper you're working with, you're going to make sure that you can get the entire animal on your page. To start off with, we want to decide where we're going to position the head and the tail. The animal is going to lay out in this direction. The head's going to be over here. The tail's going to be over here. So let's draw what are called guidelines to try to confine our drawing so that it fits on our page. Like I said, we want to have the head up in this area. So I'm going to draw a circle here to define where the head's going to be. A fox's head isn't a perfect circle, but this will sort of be our stand-in until we start doing the actual details. I think it'd be nice if we have it over here so it's not in danger of falling off the page. So I'm going to start right now and do a circle about like that. So if you have a piece of paper of whatever size, put your head over in the corner somewhere over in that position. Next, let's kind of define where the tail is going to be. The tail is going to be floating off in this direction. Let's say that we want to have the end of our tail sort of around there so it's not off the, uh, off the page. And we're going to divide up the space between the tip of the tail and the head and we're going to find the, the halfway point right around there and we're going to just go a little bit closer to the tip of our tail and we're going to make a little mark right there. That'll be where the tail starts. From here, we're going to have our back and then our tail and our legs are going to come down in this direction. From this point, let's draw a line over to the head. You can see that this point here, it's not directly between the tail and the head. It's slightly up a little bit. Make sure that yours kind of corresponds where it's not directly in the middle but it's pushed up a little. If you get something right there, let's draw a little line like that. And then we're going to draw the back. The back's not an absolute straight line. It's going to bunge, uh, bulge up a little bit and then kind of curl down. So watch me. We're going up a little bit. And then we're going to go more straight in a downward direction. Just about like that. So we've got the head, the back, and then a bit of a curve. Let's curl down to the tail now. This isn't going to be uh, one curl, there'll be a couple curls. First we're going to curve down, then we're going to curve up, and then go around the tail. So first we're going to curve down, like that, then up, like that, and then curving around the tail. So already you can see we've got an animal, and it's moving into a, a tail over there. Let's do a little bit more work on the body here. First, let's define how... Uh, how thick the body is going to be. Body of the fox is, uh, there's a lot of fur on it. It's, a, it's kind of a furry creature. I think the bottom of the belly will be around here. Let's draw just a little line right there for now. If you look at the size of the head, it's roughly the size of the head in terms of that, that distance. So whatever size you drew your head, make this distance be just about the same as that, maybe even a little bit bigger. Okay? The body is going to come up to about this point here, and then it's going to start curving up to our head. So let's make a little bit of a line here. The same thickness is sort of where the chest is coming in. And then we'll draw one more line over here. You see that? So we're starting to feel the shape of the body, 
the shape of the head, okay? Let's take this line and we're gonna curl it up. Our fox is standing and it's gonna be looking off in that direction over there. So the neck's gonna curve all the way up around here. I'm gonna do one nice smooth curve right through here. Just like that, okay? Nice smooth curve down to here. Now we can connect these lines out. These are just guidelines. Let's connect these lines together like that, like that. And then we can curve this up to that point that we made earlier, just like that. Now we're gonna be adding legs later on. Don't worry, this isn't gonna be a legless fox, but this will give us a sense of where the body is underneath those legs. The more you can kind of describe parts of the animal that you don't see in the picture, the more the whole thing will feel more realistic once you get everything put together. Before we get to those legs though, let's finish up the rough guidelines on this tail. And foxes, like I said, have very bushy tails. Uh, the uh, actual uh, muscle and bone inside the tail is rather small, but there's a lot of fur on there. This fox's tail is gonna be just about this thick. So if we get the thickness of the body, the thickness of the tail is, you know, it should be even thicker than that. I made a mistake there. This should be even fluffier than that. Nearly the thickness of the head. There we go. And going out to our, our tail there. How's yours looking? Do you have the rough proportions here? The body, about as thick as the head, the tail nearly as thick as the head. And then things laid out where most of the uh, area here is body, some of its tail. Does it look about the same as it does on mine? Okay, let's move ahead. The next thing we wanna do is start getting these, these legs in here. Uh, where we're gonna be anchoring these legs, we're gonna be calling this its hip, right up over here. Let's draw a circle where that hip's gonna be. That's just a guideline, make that a little darker, make it a little easier to see. This is where the back legs are gonna join in and the front legs are up over here. This would be its shoulder. There's a circle for its shoulder there. Now these are where the uh, legs are on our side of the animal. Now on the back side, uh, we're not gonna see that, but it's a good idea to delineate where these anchor points are going to be. Now the, the back hip, it's about the same on both sides, but this front, as you recall, the fox is turning towards us. So its shoulder is coming around this side. So the other leg, it's, that shoulder is gonna be maybe over here. So this is the shoulder on the side facing us, and this is the shoulder on the back side, right there. All right, the next thing we wanna do is decide where the knees are gonna be. The knees for the back leg, the first one is gonna be just a little bit below where the body is. Let's draw a little circle right there. Now let's work on the front leg over here. This knee is gonna be right up over here, just a little bit back from where the shoulder is. So instead of being directly below the shoulder, it's just back a little bit. And it's just underneath the body, right here. All right, so back knee, front knee. Let's do the, the front knee on the back side over here. That would be just about over here. All right, looks like we're making a little car <laughs> here at the moment. Uh, the, the back knee on the back leg over here, that would be roughly lined up with this, this knee over here. I don't know that we really need to draw another one of those because this back leg, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of muscle, there's a lot of fur there. We're not gonna see too much of the upper part of that leg. Next thing we gotta do is uh, def define where the, uh, the paws are. Let's work on these two front paws first. The paws are gonna be down about over here, about the same distance as we go from our shoulder to our elbow is gonna be the distance from the elbow to the paw. Let's make a little mark for one paw here, and these are just ovals at this point, and we're gonna do another one just underneath this leg, same kind of thing. There's that paw. Now these back paws, same sort of situation. We've got this distance between the hip and the knee, and we're gonna bring that back paw in right there. And it's just about in line with the knee on the back. Now there is uh, a little bit of a bend to uh, foxes and other canids uh, back legs where their heel is up in the air. And let's draw that heel sort of between the two of these and back a little bit, back here. 
So the leg joints hip to the knee, knee to the heel, and heel to the toes. In the front, we have shoulder to the elbow and elbow to the paw. And on this side, I'm not going to draw the whole line because this is behind the dog. But we go from shoulder to the elbow and elbow to the paw. I think at this point, it's, it is starting to feel like some member of the canid family. Let's work as our very last thing, just on the back leg on the back side. Let's make the, the back leg a little bit uh, away from this one so we're able to see it a little better. Let's put the uh, back heel over here and the back paw behind a little bit. We'll take a, a line from this back knee, draw a line over, and draw a line down. So now the basic forms are all here at this point. And I'm going to darken these up to make them a little bit easier to see. Again, these are guidelines. They're not going to be pronounced in the final drawing, but it's nice to be able to see them here so we can lay things out. All right, uh, the next thing would be good to do is start laying out the face. Uh, human faces, like fox faces, have uh, bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry means that they're the same on one side as they are on the other. It's a mirror image from your right to your left. And foxes are very much the same. So we're going to draw a line down the center, just like we have a line down the center of our face. We're going to draw a line down the center of this animal's face. Now, if it was facing straight at us, the line would be right in the middle. But it's not going to be facing straight at us. It's going to be turning kind of past us, like it's looking over its its left shoulder here. So instead of drawing the line right in the middle, if you imagine this was a globe or a beach ball and it was one, one half one color, one half the other, if you rotate that, that symmetry line is going to look curved. It's going to look like this. As it's looking off in this direction as you rotate that head. The straight line down the middle turns into a curve when you see it on an edge. The next line I want to draw in here is a guideline for the eyes. Our eyes and our face are just about halfway between the top of our head and the bottom of our chin. And a fox is pretty close to that. So let's draw a line right down the middle for where the eyes are going to be. Okay? So we've got head, shoulders, going to the bushy tail here. And we've got all of our, our legs worked out. All right. The next thing we should do is start kind of drawing out the uh, outlines of these legs here. Now the legs in the front are pretty simple. They have a reasonably uniform thickness as they go down. Let's draw the back of this leg here, right like that, to a point here. And we'll do the front of this leg, right like that, okay? Now we'll continue this down to here. It gets thinner as it goes down. It's going to taper to relatively thin down by the paw. There we go, just like that. Let's do the same on this side. Now we don't see a lot of what's behind its neck here, but we'll see a little bit, a little bit, and then we're going to taper down to the paw, just like that. Foxes are amazingly quiet on their feet when they're walking around. They're amazing hunters. They're able to uh, walk in a way that's called a fox trot. Now a fox trot, what that means is that as the front legs are walking one paw in front of the, the other. When the back legs are walking, they're walking in the exact same footfalls. Like I said, that uh, foxes are really good hunters. They can sneak up on prey really well. And if you think as a fox is moving through grass or dry leaves, if it is crunching down on anything, instead of crunching once with the front paws and once with the back paws, the back paws are stepping exactly where the front paws did. So if the, if the front paws crunched something down, like a leaf or something like that. That leaf's already been crunched, and when the back paws step that there, it's going to be a lot more quiet. It's called a fox trot, and it is a, one of the adaptations that foxes have for hunting. And the other is very good hearing. In fact, a fox is able to hear a mouse that it's hunting up to 100 feet away. If you can imagine that, 100 feet away, if you were able to hear a mouse scurrying around, that's how effective the fox's hearing is, with these big ears that come up and they can focus. They can focus on where the uh, sound is. And let's, let's hop over the ears next, but first, let's get a work on the, the back paws that work in that, that fox trot. Now, the front legs uh, were uh, pretty simple. 
uh, their uniform thickness as they go down. The back legs are a little bit different. So watch me as I draw the first back leg here. Now the bottom is, is fairly si simple. From the heel to the paw, it's a little bit of a curve. It's not a straight line, but a curve down. Watch this. A little curve, a little curve, okay? Down to the paw area, all right? And let's do that for the, uh, the uh, one on the uh, flip side too. Little curve, little curve, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna join the uh, ankle up to the knee, up to the rest of the body, and it's almost one continuous curve. In the, in the fox, you don't really see the knee very pronounced when it's just standing there. It's kind of hidden in the fur. So watch this curve as I do it. We're gonna come up around the knee and then up. So around the knee, and then up like that. Okay, you try that. A little bit of an S curve. All right, now let's do the back side. And the back side is similar, but it really spreads out as it gets uh, into this back area here. There's a lot of fur in there, okay? So we are going to do a little bit of a curve in. So it's a little bit thin here, a little bit of a curve in, and then bushing out with all the fur back here. So we've got the heel, a little bit of a curve in, and then around like that. And we'll do that on the back side too. Just like this, and going up like that. All right. Next, I promised we could get to those ears. They have exceptionally good hearing, and foxes also uh, are very good hunters because they'll work in teams. Foxes will have a, a mate oftentimes when they grow up, with their, their uh, parents, the, the vixen, the female fox. Uh, they'll grow up in the family with other foxes there. Usually when they uh, get older, they will be on their own or they will find a mate. And they're, uh, they're, foxes enjoy the companionship with the other mate. They'll play with the other mate. They will hunt with the other mate. They'll work as a team if there is a predator that is uh, after them. One of the uh, uh, members of the pair will oftentimes try to distract the predator. To, to shake it off of the trail. They'll hunt together. They work really well in that kind of group dynamic uh, that suggests that foxes, like many canids, are a very intelligent animal. And let's, let's work on those, those ears that we mentioned are used for hunting. Now the ears are gonna anchor onto the head, kind of in the same way that we anchored the legs onto the head. Let's draw some circles here. And by a circle, I mean an oval in this case. From looking at it from this side as a true circle uh, would be facing us, as it rotates around the side and the ear is gonna be on the side there, it represents as kind of an oval right there. And I'm gonna represent an oval on the back side here as well. So this is where the ear on our side comes out and then the one on the back side of the head is gonna come from there, okay? The tip of the ear here is gonna be right up in this area. So let's make a little dot right up there, okay? And we're gonna join this to the head. Now, the, uh, it's not gonna be a direct straight line. There's a few curves in here, so watch me as I do it. First, it's a little bit flat over the top. And then we're gonna curve, curve down like that. So a little flat and then curve down. And on the back side here, it's gonna curve out to a point about here and then curl in. Curling out and then curling in. Foxes tend to have uh, large ears for many members of the dog family. Uh, and some of the foxes that are not considered true foxes, such as the fennec fox, have absurdly large ears to the point where many people, myself included, find them quite cute. Uh, this, uh, being a red fox, does not have the enormous ears of a fennec fox, uh, but uh, as dogs go, foxes do tend to have reasonably large ears. Let's work on the ear over on on this side. I mentioned that foxes are very good hunters and they eat all sorts of different things. They'll eat mice, rodents of all type, lizards, snakes, uh, you know, small mammals, and they are oftentimes told in stories as being sort of a, a pest that farmers don't like because the, the, the fox is raiding the chicken coop. Uh, is sort of like a uh, a stereotype in a lot of stories, but foxes are also very helpful to farmers because they do uh, eat 
as uh, some of their food. Things like mice and other rodents that are also trouble for farmers. So there have been situations where uh, foxes were gotten rid of in an area and then the farmers realized how many mice those foxes were eating and the farmers went through the trouble of bringing in new foxes because they realized that the foxes, even though they might cause some trouble with the chicken coop on occasion, were actually a net benefit to the people because of all those smaller animals, the mice, the chipmunks and things like that, that the, mi that the foxes were eating that uh, once those animals weren't being eaten by foxes, there were more of those animals to trouble the farmer's crops. So foxes, while they can be uh, sometimes troublesome for people, can also be a real help uh, to people that are trying to raise crops out in the world. Let's work on this year here, and this year is going to have a couple of curves as well. We're going to curve down from here, just like that. And we're going to try to match these two curves together, the way that they come down like that. And on the outside, it's going to be a little bit less of a curve because the ear is kind of turned away from us. There'll still be a little bit of curve though, and watch this. Out and in like that. So not as pronounced as here but still a bit of a curve over there. All right, next thing we should do is the snout. Now the snout comes from the middle of the face here. The nose is gonna be right around in this area here. Let's define where those eyes are gonna be next. We've got tip of the snout here. One eye is gonna be just about here. Draw a circle. And the other eye is going to be just around here. So look at your picture. How does it lay out? We've got the center of the face where this crisscross is. The eyes are just set off from the crisscross right on that sort of center line, which I'll make a little bit darker so we can see it better. The eyes are right on that center line. And the nose is out here. Are things laying out the same on your picture? If they're not, these are guidelines. You can move if you decide you don't want the nose there and you want the nose over here. Draw the nose over there. If you think that it should be a little bit further to the right, move it a little bit to the right. This is the time to change things uh, because while the lines look darker than the white paper here, once we get everything colored up and really uh, darken in these lines, these guidelines are just going to fade into the background. So get things so that they look good on your page and then we'll proceed. Okay. Let's get the snout drawn in here. Let's draw the chin underneath the nose. And you know, I am at the moment thinking that I maybe made my nose a little too high. I think I want my nose down here a little bit. <laughs> so I've drawn three noses so far, but that's okay. They're gonna fade into the background. I think it would have been okay up there, but I want, I want the fox looking down a little bit. Maybe it hears a mouse rustling in the bushes a hundred feet away over there with its excellent hearing. So here's its nose right here. Next thing we wanna draw underneath is the lips here and here. Just do it's almost like a number three, but facing up. A little lips there, and then a little hint at a chin right under there. That's a lot going on in there, but I'll, I'll bring it all together for you in just a moment, okay? Here's a chin, and we're gonna wrap the chin up to the nose, okay? Just like that. So chin goes up to the nose. And from the nose, we're gonna curl it up right towards the eye, the bridge of the nose right here. It's going to go right up to the eye, just like that, okay? And let's work on the other side here. The mouth is going to come over and end right around here. All right, so we're getting that snout in there now. All right, let's get our chin. The chin's going to go back to here, like that. And now we can define the face out just a little bit. Foxes are kind of bushy. We're going to have a little bulge of fur here that kind of corresponds with the skull, this part of the skull, and then a little fluff right there. All right, those are all the basic guidelines for the fox. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is putting in details. So at this point, let's look, make sure everything lays out, that it looks basically the way that we like it and we'll proceed. Why don't we start with the face? I think the most important part of any drawing, if it is some kind of a creature or a person, is the face, to get the face right. So why don't we start right in there? And I'm gonna start with the eyes. Now we drew these circles here, and those are the eyeballs, but uh, <laughs> you know, the fox's eyeballs aren't bulging out of its head. It has 
uh, eyelids around there. So let's work on those eyelids a little bit. First, let's draw a little line here and a little line here. This is kind of the bridge of the snout. And I'm going to take the top of this line and I'm going to curve it down like this. So we're going to go straight like that and then curve down. Same on the other side. Straight like that. And when we curve down this side, because it's foreshortened, on the other side, the curve's gonna be more severe. Just down like that. Let's bold this up a little bit. Like we mean it. Get that angle in there. All right, you see that? So we get that nice strong, that nice strong angle. Just like that. Now let's do the bottom over here. We're gonna make a line from here and we're gonna connect here with a swoop. Just like that. And on the other side. Just like that. Okay, now that whole area is not the eyes. The eyes are inside there. So let's make a mark like that. Mark like that. And same on the other side. We're defining where the eye is, okay? Now we can shade some of this in, because this is dark fur here. Both sides. There we go. All right, so we have our eyes here with the fur around them. Now let's draw our pupil, okay? And pupils in foxes are like cat eyes. They're vertical, they're stretched. So let's draw that. Just like that, a stretched vertical pupil. All right, from there, let's work a little bit around this nose area. Now the nose, sort of an upside down triangular shape with the point facing down, rounded edges. Get those edges in strong and now let's, let's shade it in a little bit. But when we shade it, let's not color in the entire nose. Let's just color in from the bottom and leave the top white, like it's a little shiny. Just like that. Okay? All right. The next thing we want to do is start defining uh, these whisker areas in here. From the nose, we've got some whisker areas. We'll darken those up. And now, under the nose, we're going to make the mouth. So curve line here, curve line there, and shade it in. Like that, okay? Next step, let's define the snout a little bit. Darker lines. And darker lines. Back to here. All right, and we're gonna come up and really darken up this line here that goes up to the eye. Just like that, okay? From here, let's work a little bit on these, these ears. Now, uh, this ear here, I did some of the ear, the inside part of the ear, but I didn't do the outside part of the ear. Let's build that in, just like that. Up a little, and then curve down. And we'll do a little bit of that on this, mostly following this line, but at the bottom, curve down a little bit, okay? All right, next thing, let's get some areas that uh, have some dark fur on them, like the tips of these ears. Let's darken the tips of these ears up. Just like that, in this one. Now we're not going on this backside, but the actual edge of the ear. Just like that. And you see, I've got some roughness to these lines, and that's okay because this is a furry animal and the roughness kind of suggests a little bit of fur. In fact, it might be nice to add a little bit more of this black fur here. To add a little expression to this fox's face. Just like that. Okay. Why don't we go to some other areas that have dark full fur? Uh, some of those are the legs 
uh, the front and the back, and also parts of the tail. This is a red fox. It is going to have a little white tip, but there are significant areas of dark on the tail as well. But let's start with these front legs here, okay? The dark areas of these front legs are the paws all the way up to about the elbow. So what I'm going to do is just darken them up with this crayon, and I'm going to be coloring in the direction that the fur grows vertically here. You can suggest a lot about texture simply by the direction and the, the nature of your, your coloring. If you want to show that an area is kind of soft and smooth, if you do soft and smooth lines, it'll suggest that. If you want to suggest an area is rough and furry, kind of long, rough, straggly lines can suggest that. And you can see I'm doing that up here. These rough lines tapering off the black. Now I'm going to do a little bit of the foot here. I'm going to have the foot come over and then down. And then the back here, heel here. And I'm not going to draw the bottom because I'm going to presume that he's standing in grass or she's standing in grass. By the way, do you know the difference in name between a male fox and a female fox? The female is called the vixen. The male fox is called the dog. So there's two different names, sort of like a, a rooster and a chicken, uh, or a rooster and a hen. <laughs> uh, we have dogs and, and vixens. And I'm going to presume that this fox is going to be standing in grass. So I'm, I'm not going to color the entire paw. I'm just going to color the top of the paw and then make it kind of a ragged line on the bottom, like there's some grass down there. And we'll be adding some of that grass later to put it into an environment. Now let's do the same thing on this this back leg here. Again, darkening up these, these lines here, right up to the, the elbow. All right. And we're going to go over this later with another color to give it a little bit more richness because this isn't just black fur here. here. There's black mixed with brown. So we're going to go over with multiple passes. Same thing as before, the toes down. Foxes on their front paws have four toes on their front paws, and they have four toes on their back paws as well, but on the front paws they also have a dew claw that's right back over here. That's something that's common in a lot of dogs. If you have a pet dog, you'll notice that its front paws have this little thumb thing up in the back, and that's called its dew claw. And we can draw those in the back here if we like. They're very, very subtle. Maybe we can add those right now. Just a little bump right around here. Just to suggest their, their dew claw. It would seem that that's a bit of a, a relic of evolution. Maybe the ancestors of canids used to have that extra fifth digit and it slowly changed shape and moved up similar to the way that horses ended up just with one finger facing down. The other fingers are kind of drawn up inside of a horse's skeleton and some of its other relatives, the, the rhinoceros and the taper, which are a horse's closest relatives. Okay, so we've got the front legs reasonably darkened up. Now the back legs have a lot of dark as well, but they're not as dark as the front. So why don't we do them together? Why don't we start with the feet? Again, doing that toe over here and the back of the foot. And we can do the same on the backside one as well. And let's start coloring. We can color the foot black through here. And again, let's make it rough on the bottom. Like there's grass down there. This fox is hunting its prey. It's hungry, trying to get breakfast. All right, so we've got two, two black feet there. Now, because we're seeing different parts of these hind legs, they're gonna look slightly different because the outside face is different from the inside face. Let's work on this one that faces us first. Having a lot of black on this area, on the front, 
of the leg, not so much on the back though. All right, and it comes around to the knee. Continuing dark up to the knee and then taper from the knee up. And we're gonna taper across this area like that. See how I do it and then you can lay yours out. And if yours isn't exactly like mine, that's not any trouble at all. There's all sorts of variations in nature and all sorts of variations in the color patterns and fur patterns in animals. So it doesn't have to be exact. All right, so something like that on our back leg. Now on the, one of the, on the reverse side, it's a little bit different. We're gonna have some shadow through here. On the back side, And that'll just disappear up behind the other leg, just like that. And we're gonna have a few little areas down here, just a little bit on the front and a little stripe right there, just like that. Now the last place where we're gonna have quite a bit of dark is the bottom of the tail and kind of the edges of the tail. The way that the fur grows out of the tail is it has different pigments in different areas. So depending on the angle that you're looking at things at, uh, they might have kind of a different effect and that results in the edges having a sense of there being more, more dark in there. So let's start in the back here. Now I mentioned the actual tail in here is quite thin, but there's a lot of fuzzy hair here. So when we're drawing the hair, we're not gonna draw it in the direction of the tail. It's coming out, it's like a puff ball. So as we're coloring, let's reflect that. And you can see how the, the fur is coming out like that. And remember how I mentioned that you can suggest the texture of things by your line work? This is a very fuzzy sort of area. And I'm suggesting that with the use of types of lines that I'm doing. You can see I'm just going over and over it to get it to the right level of dark. Now you notice I'm not going all the way to the end here because we want to leave a little bit of white tip at the end of that tail. I'm gonna go to the top over here. All right, and some speckles in the middle, like that. Maybe we come back and we do a little bit more of those, those later on. Okay, now this is a red fox. Why don't we start getting to the color red <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, but instead of using red, uh, we're gonna principally use oranges, browns, and then just a little bit of a touch of red. But orange is gonna be our primary color that we're gonna be using, even though orange is technically a secondary color. The primary colors for pigment are red, yellow, and blue, and the secondary colors are the colors you get by mixing those. Orange being a mix of red and yellow. Now that's for subtractive colors, paints and things like that. If you're mixing light, it's different, but we are using paints and pigments. So this is our secondary color in that respect. Okay, so, there are many p patches of orange on the fox. The fox is going to be primarily this color and there are some white areas. So let's make sure we demarcate those white areas, put up some borders so we don't accidentally fall into them and, and color up, uh, cover up our white areas. Uh, one white area is gonna be the chest. So we are going to make a line like this and then over like this, a little bit of a swoop and then a swoop like that. So this is going to be white, this is going to be orange, and we're going to see a little bit of this orange represented on the back side of the head here. We're going to take a line from the tip of this eye here and come down and around like that. And then we're going to uh, continue this line over to the nose at the end of the snout. So just, just about where we ended it here. We're gonna have that line swoop down around the eye and then swoop to the snout. And same over here on the backside, up to the eye 
just like that. The only other areas that might have a little bit of white are inside the ears over here, and we'll get to those in a little bit. But first, let's start really coloring in a lot of this. Now, you remember what we said about the direction? We're gonna color in the direction of the fur. We're just gonna go over this whole area here. Now on the side of the animal, the hair is going in this direction. Now, you notice we kind of made a note of where this leg goes. Once we get into that leg area, we wanna change direction. I'm gonna have the hair going more, a little more vertical in this area. there and we can go over this line a little that was just a guideline it's to remind us to stop it's our stop sign right there there we go and again just like the black down here orange is not going to be the only color that we're putting down here it's going to be a mix of brown we'll get some red in there to make this a true red fox we're probably gonna come in with a little bit more black to shade it. Maybe even we'll get a little bit of, uh, of golden yellow up in this area, the hind quarter. Oftentimes we'll have a, a bit of golden yellow in there. All right. I'm going right into the tail area. Remembering to change direction and not to color the very tip. We'll leave that white. Do some sketchy lines around that tail. There. Right around there. Really wild lines. I'm primarily using the, the edge of my crayon here. The side as opposed to the tip. I find that it's a little easier to hold crayons that way, or any uh, drawing implement. And also, you tend to cover more paper because you have a wider surface touching on your paper. Right. So like I said, let's ooze into some of these areas down here. On this leg, we can color, color the entire area with orange. On this leg in the back, we're still gonna leave a little bit of white through the bottom here, but we can color this area. Right through there. And going all over the black. And down on these legs, you're not gonna see much of it, but it will give a little more sense of color down into this fur here. And same over here, up onto the back side there. down into the black. All right, now let's start working up in the face area here, starting with this edge. And we can really show off the roughness of this fur here. See how I'm coloring in the direction that the fur falls, just like that. And then going up, and we can break these lines that we made up a little bit, but always going in the direction of the fur. And also, the length of my strokes should correspond with how long the hair is. Where it's longer hair, we can do longer strokes. Where the hair gets shorter, like around the face, we should do more careful, smaller strokes. And the hair is moving in this direction here. Now remember, we don't wanna go into the inner ear here. We're gonna revisit that in a little bit. But for right now, we want to just focus on the other parts of the face. The fur in the middle of the face is going up and then curving around the eyes. So as we're curving around the eyes, our strokes are going to start going more vertically. Over the eye. And now let's start turning them around here. Going a little more vertically. Up, 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 up. Between the eyes. It's almost like that furrowed brow right there. And we're vertical going right up between the two ears. All right. 
Remember keeping this ear open as well. And then the, the hair changes direction over this eye. All right, and we're gonna just finish up the edge right there and the cheek here. Like that. And now we just got the, the snout and under this eye. Why don't we start from here and we'll move over. Again, going in the direction of the fur. It's moving in this direction here. So our crayon strokes do the same thing. Coming away from the eye. Just like that. And changing direction on the top of the nose. Going up vertically between the eyes. Just like that. I'm starting to look like a red fox now, isn't it? And we do this little area here, again, keeping track of the direction of the fur there. Okay. That is looking pretty nice. Before we put the orange down, why don't we uh, put a little bit of work into some of the areas that are going to be edged a little bit. We've got these nice extra thick edge lines here. Let's do a little bit on the back like that. A little bit of extra. Right like that. And some extra in the tail area here. A little bit darker. There's nothing wrong with committing to a color. And really, really putting it down on the paper. All right, that's pretty good. Last thing to do with the orange before we put it down, we might come back to it later if we feel we need more, but the last thing for right now is just inside the ears. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of uh, white and black in here and white over here, but we will have some orange inside the ear. So watch what I do here. It's gonna be in this area here. And we, again, we wanna go with the direction of the fur, which in the ear is that way. Here we go. Like that. And as we move out, we'll change the direction a little bit. Be a little bit more vertical. Just like that. All right, let's do on this side. Coming up and over the ear on the outside surface there. And just about that much, this area here. Same thing going in the direction of that fur. There we go. I'm gonna just clean up this line here on the top. Make that a little smoother. The way I drew it there, it made him look like he just woke up and he was having a terrible hair day. <laughs> that smooths it out a little bit better that way. Okay. Now, I mentioned to finish up the ears, we want to get a little bit of black in there. So let's go back to the black just for a moment. And let's put a little bit of black right up the middle here. Just watch what I do. I'm gonna do kind of a little squiggle of black, just like that. Okay. And you know what? We should do a little bit of orange on the on this side here, just on the edge, just to finish up the edge of the ear there. We do that on this side too. Just a little bit of orange, just like that. Okay. So now the next step is to get some brown into this fur, because there's a lot of brown on a red fox, and the brown being kind of a darker color, a darker shade, is going to help us to really create the sense of shadows, because there's a lot of shadow, uh, shadowing we're gonna be doing, and the process called modeling. Modeling is giving something the sense that it has some three-dimensionality, some depth. If you look at my hand here, you see it's not just one single color. The way the light falls in, there are highlight areas, there are darker areas, uh, you know, the darker areas are all over here. The highlight areas are facing the light in that direction. And we want to create a lot of that same feel here on the fox's body. So why don't we start with the body here? And we're just going to go over first all these areas that we did in orange with a little pass of brown to just change them so they're not so vibrant. This fox, after all, it has to, it has to camouflage hide in its environment. We want to help it do that 
make it not bright, brilliant orange. Is it going across? See how we're toning down that color? I know the orange was beautiful, <laughs> but for realism, I want to tone that down so this, this animal can really do a good job camouflaging in, in its environment. And really using the side of the crayon here at this moment. I'm still going in the direction of the hair, the fur, but I am not, not making any really hard lines. I'm just trying to tone down that orange a little bit. We'll go down into these legs, right over those black areas, keeping the white areas here. You want to keep those white areas, but go over the orange areas, right down to here. Going over those black areas. Same thing over here. We're going to go over all this leg here. Down the back of the leg, over the orange, over the black. All right. Over here. Same thing. Over all that black. You can start to see the difference in richness of this black here. It's not just black on white paper anymore. It's really starting to feel like there's a mix of all different types of shades of fur in there. Same here. Even though we're only using the three primary colors and the three secondary colors plus black and brown, you can get an amazing variety of shades and brightnesses and hues by mixing those. I know Crayola crayons come in boxes of 64 different colors, 3,000 different colors, but you can really mix all sorts of different colors just with the uh, the primary and secondary colors. I should note that most people will say, it's, it's commonly agreed upon, that the subtractive colors, the ones used for mixing paints, and crayons and things, that the, the primary colors, I said that they were red, yellow, and blue. That's, that's generally agreed upon, but it's not actually true. The, the real primary colors, for subtractive mixing of colors with paints and dyes and things like that are actually magenta, yellow, cyan, and black. If you ever look at a printed piece of uh, packaging material and you open it up, you'll oftentimes see those four colors, black, magenta, yellow, and cyan, uh, printed somewhere. Those are called the registration marks, and those are the actual subtractive primary colors. Somewhere along the line, everyone wanted to agree that it was uh, red, blue, and yellow. And I suppose I, I, I parrot that line here too, but the real ones are magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. All right. As I put the brown in here, I am paying close attention to making sure that I am following the, the texture of the fur. What did I say earlier? One of the most important parts of your whole picture is the face. You want to make sure you get that right. Okay, we're going over all this fur here, making it look a lot more realistic. And toning it down so this fox will have a, a successful time hunting its rodents, and lizards, and snakes, and all the other things that they eat. They're, they also eat uh, non-meat. They're omnivores, which means that they eat plants and animals. They're very opportunistic, very clever hunters. All right, coming over there. Over the eye. All right, so now we have successfully subdued that color. And now it's time to go in and really start shading in some of these areas. Uh, shading is done in the areas that are in shadow and Generally speaking, that's the underside because light is usually coming from above. So light's coming from up there and we're going to put some shadows in here. There's kind of a fold between this leg and the rest of the body. So let's start darkening that up right through there.
really start committing to that. You notice I haven't gone all the way down with these, uh, these pigments, and that's because there is some white on the belly down there, and I haven't really talked about that. Probably should. Let's make the actual belly so we know where to stop. I'm going to use a black crayon and just make some lines for where that fur is. So that's the actual belly, and there's some, there is some uh, white fur there too. All right, back to the brown, and making sure we keep some of that white fur down there. All right, so we're darkening all this up like that, and darkening in here. There's kind of a fold between the leg and the body here. Darkening that up. Through to here, because this leg, remember, it goes from knee up to the hip, so the leg actually goes up in that direction. There's a little fold here, so we're going to tend to see a little bit of shadow in there. Okay, so you just see how with adding this, it really gives the feel that there's kind of some folds and some valleys in here. Let's do the same on this side of this leg, darken up this area here. My, my paper's singing to me. I've got so much wax on the paper at this point. Here we go. Darkening that up. Just like that. And right down through all here. It's all down in shadow. And certainly the inside edge of this leg is going to be in shadow. Same for the tail here. Shadow on the bottom side. So let's get pretty aggressive here. Really shadowing that up. We want to mean it. As I'm using the side of this crayon to color things in, I'm automatically sharpening it too, <laughs> which is kind of handy. So if you're using the edges or the sides of the crayon, sometimes when you need that, you're automatically sharpening your crayons for yourself. All right. And I think you can already start to see that sense of volume, that sense of modeling that we've created by darkening up the bottom of that tail here. Let's work a little bit on this leg right here. Right now it's pretty flat. Let's curve it a little bit. Make this a little bit darker through here on this side, just right there. And then on this side, again, going in the direction of the fur, Darkening that up. Right through there. Up into the shoulder. Area. Just like that. Okay. Let's move into the face. In the face, we gotta be careful there. It's very important. Smaller strokes. But certainly, we're gonna have some shadow here. We're going to have some shadow on what is called the shadow side of the face because the light's coming from over there. Let's darken this up through here. A little more there. And definitely this area under the eye and on this side of the snout. So it looks like the light's coming from there. And this is the shadow right through here. Just like that. And maybe a little bit under this brow to give the sense that it sticks out a little bit. Darken that up. We can go right over these black areas a little bit. Keep the white of the eyes. We're not going to keep them white forever. But for now, we want to keep them white. Foxes have a beautiful golden eye, and we want to make sure we preserve that. All right. We have a little bit of shadow on this side of the ear here. Just like that. Maybe a little bit of shadow on this side of the head. Join it. Just like that. And why don't we kind of shade in some of this, this area of the ear around the black. Give it a little bit of brown. Show that this ear is a little darker than that ear. But we'll put a little bit of shade in this ear. Like that as well. Maybe some little whiskers over there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Last thing we need to do is just a little bit of extra shading. And to really get some of these areas shaded in, we're gonna use black to do a few touch-ups here and there and add a little bit of texture. First, let's really darken some of this up. That fold between the 
the leg and the body. Make some, some black fur in there. Same through here. Right here. The shadow area is right there. Let's put some more shadow in through here. Under that tail. Let's define the, the tips of the hair at the end, too. To show that this is a, a fluffy tail, just like that. May put a little bit more black up here. Oftentimes there's a little bit of a heavier concentration of black at the top there. Just like that. A little more shadow through there as well. Maybe a little bit up the side of this leg. And maybe just around this eye a little bit. Very lightly. Just a few, a few dashes, a few lines. Maybe a little up in here, too. Just like that. A few hairs there as well. So there's a couple things left for us to do here. We're gonna put a little bit of shadow in the white areas. Even though it's white, it's gonna have some shadow. We're gonna color up these eyes, and then we're gonna do the environment just a little bit. Let's start with those shadows on the fur. Oftentimes, shadows in real life won't be black or gray. They'll be kind of a bluish color. The sky is blue, and when a certain part of an object uh, is not getting light from the sun, it'll still be getting light kind of bouncing in ambiently, is the word, from all the sky. If you're in a forest, oftentimes the shadows will be kind of green. So we're going to use blue to sort of hint at some of the shadows that are in uh, some of these white areas. Let's just do a little test first, over by the tail. And you see what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put some, a little bit of, a little bit of fuzzy, shadowy bit over there. We're gonna do the same thing on this back leg here. It's not getting any direct sunlight down there, but it is getting light from the sky ambiently. Under here as well, a little bit of blue there. And now let's work on this chest. Most of this chest is gonna be in shadow with a little bit of light coming up over here. Remember the direction of the fur is in this direction here. So we should, we should sketch with that in mind. And it's okay if our blue kind of goes into some of our orange, that's all right. I'm gonna stop at the jawline here. We're gonna come back to that, but we're gonna do that separately because that's a different direction of fur. And I'm going very light, just a little hint of blue here through most of this area. And we're gonna stop it right around there. Go maybe a little bit darker down over here. Purple is another color that you can use to hint at blue, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. Got my purple crayon. Maybe we add a little bit of purple down into these colors. We can do the same over here too. A little bit of purple, a little bit of purple, a little bit of purple through there. All right, we've got a little bit more shadow to work around the snout here. And remember the direction of the, the fur and the whiskers? Let's follow it as we're coloring. Just like that. All right. Let's color up those eyes. Nice golden color. I think it would be a nice mix with yellow. And be careful when we're going close to the black with the yellow. The yellow will blur that black. So try to stay away from your edges as best you can. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna leave the corner of this eye white, like there's a little highlight, a little glint from the light up there. Same on this eye. Color that side, color that side, but leave a little bit of white glint there. And to make them a little more golden, I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. Just mix it together a little bit. Maybe a little extra orange at the top, like a little shadow from the brow on the eyes there. All right, how's our fox coming along? How's your fox coming along? The colors, I think, are pretty much there. The shape of the fox looks like a fox. Last thing for us is just to create its environment a little bit. So I'm gonna take a green crayon and hint at some grass. And just like the fur, 
We draw the lines in the direction of the grass. I'm just bouncing along here. Maybe some of them are a little bit longer. It's almost like a really, really messy signature. There we go, under the paws. And getting a little more sparse as we go out. Maybe a few taller blades here and there. You can mix some yellow in there, maybe some old drying grasses mixed in there a little bit. And to that end, maybe some brown as well. A little brown leaves. And that just about does it. There you go, the red fox, one of nature's most handsome animals. I hope you enjoyed drawing along with me today, and if you did, make sure you join me next time when we draw from nature.